Partnerships and relationships are hard to do. You can see that line. What we were interested in doing, as you can see from this title screen, is to look at some working with public spaces and public art. And we conducted this project with a group of teachers and their students in secondary schools. I got a research faculty grant to do this, a COFA research grant, and we were keen to work with the, cultivate, uh, the Curating Cities project. Most of you would know about the, creative, uh, the Curating Cities project, Jill Bennett's um, ARC project, where the intention over a five year period is to look at how you might curate or care for space in the, um, in the Sydney area. We were very keen to piggyback on that project, or as Jill talked about very early on within her project, that there would be a patchwork of practice beyond just what artists and designers were doing, where we looked at how we could care for space in our own local communities and so on. And we picked that up quite seriously to see what could schools actually do in thinking about local ecologies, local social ecologies, how might <coughs> we intervene in those only with temporal works, but one would hope with projects that would have longer term purposes as well. We were keen to um, situate ourselves within that Curating <coughs> Cities project. We had access to the Experimental Arts Conference. We went to the C Curating Cities Conference and exhibition that was down at Circular Quay in Customs House. We were especially interested in Natalie Jeremajenko's work, the artist who works with a background in physics, uh, bioengineering, and it goes on and on. Uh, an artist who was interested in proposing non-violent futures, but futures where social change is extremely important. We were also interested in the Try This at Home project, which was on an object. Some of you would know that, and we were about that, and we were also very keen to look at the work of the Slow Art Collective and uh, Natural Fuse, amongst the others, that were, including Makeshift, that were showing. We were also interested in data visualisation, tracking, and augmented reality. We looked to people internationally for that, and we looked to locals such as Josh Hall, who's a PhD student here, who was doing some terrific work with augmented reality. And we were also interested in other public interventions that were taking place. We referred to people like Janet Cardiff and Blast Theory. All of these people gave us a springboard, these kinds of activities in public spaces, looking at the contemporary world gave us a springboard for the sort of work that we were interested in doing. And I have a very strong view that the teacher is the most, is the strongest agency in the st student's creative work. So I think of that art classroom as a, a social space, a social reality, a place which is different from what happens next door. Teachers have that much influence on students. <coughs> so they brought a background knowledge of having worked with installations with students before, having a great interest in contemporary technologies. They were also well versed in the syllabus and what could be done. So they were working within the constraints of the syllabuses, but really pushing the edges with those and helping to rethink aspects of those. And we were very keen to look at how, and as I said to you, relative to the work that I was doing, how could you have practices which were sensitive to local areas, but actually be doing something which was bigger than just the local area? A caveat here would be, or a constraint would be, it was never intended that the project, the works would be ongoing. They were temporal works that were being made. That I think is a strength and a weakness of the project in that it's strange to be talking about sustainability and public art, but putting limits on the time in which it exists but we couldn't go any further than what we did in the, in the project, I don't think. What is the relationship of a student to their work? Normally the student would think about themselves as an artist and they would make a work. But what we found with these projects is the, the students changed roles because they became part of the work when we were involved in these installations and performances. And what happened because these were real public events that took place the students had a first-hand experience in that, word, in that word experience, but they had a first-hand understanding of how the audience <coughs> matters to making an artwork in a way that they may not have experienced before. Because good, a good number of the students actually exchanged with the public about the works that were made. 
We're also interested in sustainability. I think that's a very problematic term in many respects, as important as it is. And I think Amy summed it up, um, one of the teachers involved in the project, we just weren't interested in this being a greenwash, you know, a modern sort of greenwash. And so we were interested in that and I think we have realised aspects of sustainability reasonably well in some cases and not so well in others. But I think time plays a significant role in that. So in the longer term, I think some of the things that the students took on will manifest themselves, but we wouldn't be able to say at the end of this project that this, that this helps sustainability in this way or this way. But I think the general values about sustainability would have been cultivated as a result of taking on this project. Hi, my name is Melinda Hodges. Um, I'm a visual arts teacher at Mariah College. And originally um, this school was chosen um, to be part of the Cultivating Urban Ecologies project as a pilot project because it's right in the centre of Sydney and one of, the, uh, one of the only schools that's actually in um, Sydney Council. Um, and so Ultimo as an area has <coughs> a very interesting um, <coughs> landscape, um, a very interesting social dynamic. Um, and the project that I organised last year aimed to kind of look at and map the streetscape of Ultimo um, as an interdisciplinary project. Um, so I worked with a geography teacher and a languages teacher to create a collaborative project um, with 90 visual arts, well they were just year 8 students. Um, and we went out on a two day excursion into the streets of Ultimo where students used um, numerous kind of things like GPS trackers, cameras, drawings, iPhones to map and kind of chart uh, the social, economic, geographical um, kind of landscape of Ultimo and then we brought it back and kind of created um, a collaborative kind of chart or map or patchwork of the area. This year I started at Mariah College, which is a Jewish day school in, um, in the eastern suburbs. And I decided to um, re-look at the project um, with a group of year 11 students. So there was 15 year 11 students in my class and it's a visual arts um, class going into the HSC for 2013. The first thing they did was research um, two sites of interest, two key sites in their local area, um, which were Mariah College itself, which has a very interesting history, um, and Centennial Park, which also has a really interesting history and natural and man-made kind of history. Um, and what students did is that they created site-specific works um, for these two sites through their research um, that were time-based, um, temporal kind of interventions into the spaces and which relied heavily on the audience engagement. In fact, audience was probably integral to all of their projects um, as they were kind of interventions and very interactive for the audience. Hi everyone, I'm Amy Yong Siri. I'm a teacher at Burwood Girls High School. So we've got phase one, um, which was mapping Burwood itself. So the, a very similar to um, Melinda's project at IC, IGS in that um, regard. Um, phase two, which is a um, postcard to Chimerica. And then phase three is the artifacts from Burwood. They're basically the three stages of art making. In each stage, students undertook a little bit of studying um, into the work of other practitioners to help them kind of negotiate what it was that they were trying to make. Um, and they would either draw on the conceptual practice or um, the techniques um, that other practitioners had used. And the core idea, as Kerry alluded to, was um, the idea that curating is to care and how can we care for our city without um, greenwashing and um, doing it in a sustainable way which actually just meant embedding ideas into the students mind. Hi my name is Nicole DeLosa and I'm actually here representing the, my colleagues and the students of Hornsby Girls High School. Um, this was a project that we undertook as an entire art faculty. What started out as an opportunity to revisit um, an existing installation unit that we've always done with Year 8, we certainly signed up for something that um, eventuated into something a lot more than we expected. We've chosen the Hornsby Fountain site, which also happens to be a Westfield shopping centre, so we have some connections there. And, as, and also mainly because it was a central meeting point for the area, um, <coughs> for our local community. And it's a site really familiar with students um, that travel to and from various places around Sydney, in fact, 
uh, via the Hornsby Railway Station. The fact that they walk through it most days, most of the students do, it was a place that they knew but maybe hadn't really looked at and so the project was really inviting them to look at something that they thought they really knew but in a completely different way. Um, we chose all of Year 8, 120 students and uh, originally I think the concerns for us had been that our installation unit had been at a local uh, Narrabeen Lakes in this beautiful natural environment and we did these absolutely lovely um, aesthetic installation works but um, here we were asking them to go into the real world with real people and you know the concerns obviously were for us was that we wanted them to engage with an audience which was completely different to what we'd asked them to do before and we didn't necessarily know what kind of relationships or engagement you know they were going to have and of course we wanted it to be positive but you can't guarantee that with the general public um, and so even though it was an installation based unit we found ourselves with installations happenings art performances art interventions that would engage the community to this particular site um, in a positive way via these public art events. I'm Karen Profilio from North Sydney Girls High School and we did our project slightly differently to um, other people in that we kind of did an intervention into the city and used the objects that we made to kind of change the space and to change people's feelings and to actually make them sort of react in a different way. So we called it Dandelion Deeds because we use that as the metaphor for us sending out our message into the, into the wild and see how many seeds actually fell into the ground and grew or if they were just blown away and were fallow. So that's basically where that came from. Um, so the background of our project was so to encourage communication. So we wanted these chance encounters and we, we hypothesised that using art in a traditional way plus a technological way would give us richer communication. And we did find some interesting findings in the end, which I will get to at the end. But basically we set out with this idea and we thought, let's try and see what happens when you use real art that the kids have made and also put a, a modern day sort of spin on it. So we used art and we also used the QR code and we use postcards, which is always very big at North Sydney. Um, we, we also then wanted to map what was going on and, and you can see that there's sort of little things that are, are common to each of the projects which actually came about c quite serendipitously really. We didn't get together and go, I know, we'll all use postcards or we'll all use concertina books or something along those lines. So basically it was interesting that because of the artists we looked at and the things we were influenced by, we came up with different ideas.